the next one is types of cyber attacks so if a cyber attack is an exploitation of computer systems and networks it uses malicious code to alter computer code logic or data and lead to cyber crimes such as information and identity theft we are living in a digital world and today most of the people use computers and internet due to the dependency on digital things the illegal computer activity is growing and changing like any type of crime so cyber attacks can be classified into the following categories web based attacks and system based attacks so let's understand more about these things web based attacks are the attacks which occur on a website or with web applications some of the important web based attacks can be injection attacks dns spoofing session hijacking phishing brute force denial of service volume based attacks protocol attacks application layer attacks dictionary attacks url interpretation file inclusion attacks man in the middle attacks so all these are the types of web based attacks so injection attacks then dns spoofing session hijacking phishing brute force denial of service then dictionary attacks url interpretation file inclusion attacks man in the middle all these are the system based attacks i mean web based attacks then system based attacks virus bomb frozen house frozen house back doors and bots all right so in the web based attacks there are these many types and in system based attacks there there are these many types so let's discuss them one by one so the injection attacks is the attack in which some data will be injected into a web application to manipulate the application and fetch the required information example a sql injection code injection log injection xml injection etc
So it is the attack in which some data will be injected into a web application to manipulate the application and fetch the required information. Then DNS spoofing. DNS spoofing is a type of computer security hacking whereby a data is introduced into a DNS resolver's cache, causing the name server to return an incorrect IP address, diverting traffic to the attacker's computer or any other computer. The DNS spoofing attacks can go on for a long period of time without being detected and can cause serious security issues. Then session hijacking. It is a security attack on a user session over a protected network. Web applications create cookies to store the state and user sessions. By stealing the cookies, an attacker can have access to all of the user data. Then phishing. Phishing is a type of attack which attempts to steal sensitive information like user login credentials and credit card number. It occurs when an attacker is masquerading as a trustworthy entity in electronic communication. Then we have brute force. It's a type of attack which uses a trial and error method. This attack generates a large number of guesses and validates them to obtain actual data. So brute force is a type of attack which uses a trial and error method. And this attack generates large number of guesses and validates them to obtain actual data like user password and personal identification number. This attack may be used by criminals to crack encrypted data or by security analysts to test an organization's network security. So then we have denial of service. It's an attack which is meant to make a server or network resource unavailable to the users. It accomplishes this by flooding the target with traffic or sending it information that triggers a crash. It uses the single system and single internet connection to attack a server. It can be classified into volume-based attacks and protocol-based attacks and application layer attacks. Volume-based attacks is to saturate the bandwidth of the attack site and is measured in bits per second. Protocol attacks consumes actual server resources and is measured in a packet. 
then application layer attacks. The goal is to crash the web server and is measured in request per second. Then we have dictionary attacks. This type of attack stores the list of a commonly used password and validated them to get original password. Then URL interpretation is a type of attack where we can change the certain part of URL and you can make a web server to deliver web pages for which he is not authorized to browse. Then we have file inclusion attacks. It's a type of attack that allows an attacker to access unauthorized or essential files which is available on the web server or to execute malicious files on the web server by making use of the include functionality. Then we have man in the middle attacks. It's a type of attack that allows an attacker to intercept the connection between client, client and server and acts as a bridge between them. Due to this, an attacker will be able to read, insert and modify the data in the intercepted connection. So all these are the examples of web-based attacks. Then we have system-based attacks. So these are the attacks which are intended to compromise computer or the computer network. Some of the important system-based attacks are as follows. So virus, worm, frozen holes, backdoors, and bots. Virus is a type of malicious software program that spreads throughout the computer files without the knowledge of a user. It is a self-replicating malicious computer program that replicates by inserting copies of itself into other computer programs when executed. It can also execute instructions that cause harm to the system. Worm is a type of malware whose primary function is to replicate itself to spread to uninfected computers. It works same as the computer virus and often originate from email attachments that appear to be from trusted senders. Then Trojan Halls is a malicious program that occurs unexpected changes to computer setting and unusual activity, even when the computer should be idle. It misleads the user of its true intent. It appears to be a normal application, but when opened, some malicious code will run in the background. Then we have backdoors. It's a method that bypasses the normal authentication process. A developer may create a backdoor so that an application or operating system can be accessed 
for troubleshooting or other purpose. Then finally, bots. Bot, it's a short for robot, is an automated process that interacts with other network services. Some bots program run automatically, while others only execute commands when they receive specific input. Common examples of bots are the crawler, chat room bots, and malicious bots. So these are the different types of cyber attacks.